Hey guys, this is Paul, and this video was originally supposed to be your standard M1 MacBook Air review. But the more research I did, and the more I look into my own experience actually using the laptop, I realized there's a lot of things I wish I'd known before making a purchase, particularly when it comes to what configuration I selected. A lot of reviews really just focus on the M1 chip that can supposedly handle anything that you throw at it, but there's a lot more to this laptop than you think. So let's get into it. But first, let me start off by saying that for 90% of people, this M1 MacBook Air is a fantastic choice. The design and build quality is rock solid. The Magic Keyboard and Force Touch trackpad are great. It's got a nice display and performance wise, the M1 kills it while delivering amazing battery life. In one hour of casual browsing on Chrome at about 85 to 90% brightness, the battery depleted only about 13%. This means you could probably expect seven to eight hours at a minimum for casual use or way more depending on your brightness levels. So if you're someone who uses their laptop primarily for things like document editing, email, web browsing, or even light photo editing, you will love the M1 Air. I highly recommend it. But this video is more for those power users who might be thinking, well, I've heard all these amazing things about the M1 chip, so maybe I'll get this laptop for something like gaming or 4K video editing. The first time I edited a video on this machine, it started out just crazy crushing it. I could scrub through my 4K timeline easily, I had no issues chopping up my A-roll, and I was thinking, wow, this M1 thing is the real deal. Fast forward to the end of the edit when I was putting on my finishing touches like transition and adding in background music, and things started to get messy. Video playback was choppy, even when I changed to performance prioritization on Final Cut Pro, and I had this issue where the audio would completely cut out for minutes at a time and then randomly come back out of nowhere. So I started to look into what was causing these issues. By the way, I'm using the eight core GPU model of the Air, so it has the exact same processor as the M1 MacBook Pro. The first thing I thought was that it was probably overheating and throttling the processor because unlike the MacBook Pro, the Air is a fanless machine. But when I checked temperatures using iStatistica, it was running at pretty average safe CPU temps. Then when I checked to see what percentage of the CPU was actually being used, it rarely exceeded 50 or 60%. The only time it was consistently higher than that was when I was running Fortnite, which has not been optimized for M1 Max, so it's being translated through Rosetta 2. So it's not surprising that that really pushed the chip to its limits. So the M1 chip clearly wasn't the issue, and that's when I realized the only possible problem had to be my eight gigabytes of RAM. I did a bit of research and learned about swap memory, which is basically when the computer runs out of actual RAM and starts temporarily using the SSD storage for overloaded memory space. Swap memory was used on the older Intel Macs, but people have been reporting way higher swap memory usage on these new M1 machines. So this raises concern for two reasons. Reason number one, the excessive use of swap memory can wear on the SSDs and potentially hurt them in the long run. In my worst case scenario testing where I was exporting a 4K video while having multiple tabs open on Chrome, I saw that the SSD had written about 600 gigabytes in just 15 minutes. And using the help of a guide from Macworld, I was able to check my total bytes written to my SSD in the two weeks that I've had it, and I saw that it was 18.7 terabytes. So that's over one terabyte per day. There is some debate as to how much this would actually affect the SSDs in the long run. Obviously, that is a lot of data to write, but some people say Apple's SSDs are very high quality and should be able to handle that amount of usage for five plus years. But the bigger issue for me, and reason number two this is so problematic, is simply that the use of swap memory slows things down because it's just not as efficient as using the onboard RAM. It's pretty obvious to me now that the RAM is the main issue with this laptop. As soon as I see that memory pressure graph and activity monitor hitting red, that's when things start to crumble. I talked to my friend Miles who edits 8K HDR video on his M1 Mac Mini, which has 16 gigabytes of RAM, 
and he says it edits like butter. He has no issues with it. And for even more evidence that proves that eight gigabytes of RAM is probably the main issue here, Max Tech made a really great video comparing the eight gigabyte RAM MacBook Pro against the 16 gigabyte Pro. And he basically showed that in cases where the laptops were using a lot of RAM, the 16 gigabyte MacBook performed some tasks over twice as fast as the eight gigabyte version. So what did I actually learn from all this? At this point, I just kind of regret that I didn't spend that extra $200 to upgrade from eight gigs to 16 gigs. I really think that would fix most of the issues I have using this device for editing. It's also important to note that this isn't just a MacBook Air issue, it also applies to the MacBook Pro and the Mac Mini as well. But to kind of zoom things out a bit, this is really only in the extreme use cases. And to restate what I said earlier, 90% of people would probably never even need to think about this issue in the first place. But if you are a power user looking to get the most performance out of your M1 Air or your M1 Pro, just upgrade the RAM, you won't regret it. If you are planning to purchase one of the M1 MacBooks, I'll have the links in the description below. Those are affiliate links, so you'll also be supporting the channel at the same time. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in my next video.